he that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So that verse shows that a person has to endure to the end to be saved for his salvation. And a lot of people mistake that verse to apply to themselves. But no, the verse is actually applying to the tribulation time period. That's why we rightly divide the word to, we rightly divide the verse to the particular time period and group of people. That's what dispensation is. So if you look at Webster's 1828 dictionary, it does show that it can refer to a specific time period with a specific group of people in it. What's also very interesting is that it also shows uh, exceptions as well. I'm not going to explain this part, but I thought that this would be a bonus for some people who are familiar with dispensationalism. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting in Webster's 1828 dictionary. So this is why we believe in that. But our church also believes not only dispensationalism, but the King James Bible is true. So we believe that the King James Bible is the only perfect, pure word of God. And how does this relate to dispensationalism? Come on. Out of all the Bibles, the King James Bible is the one, in verse 15, that sh says, Study to right. rightly divide. Yeah, that's right. That's a pro-King James thing. All other modern Bibles, so you got the NIV, you got the Kick NASV, Kick you also got the NKJV. Yeah, it's wrong. Sorry. Yeah. Amen. Right. It's wrong. So notice how all the modern Bibles, they get rid of the word study and rightly divide. Right. For proper study of the Bible, see, to find truth in the Bible is when you have right division. So you got the ESV. Kick it. You also got the NLT. You also got all the other modern versions. This is a King James Bible thing. Study and rightly divide. It's solely King James Bible. And dispensationalism, you'll notice that it's rightly divided. So what's very interesting is this, is that our kind of church, you notice, is where? You find truth. Now you might say, why is that? I'm not saying our church only. There are plenty of Bible-believing churches out there. So I'm saying those kind of churches. Our Bible-believing type of churches are the only churches that teach truth. No other groups. You might say, why is that? Because we're the best, we're the bomb? No, because we go by two main keys. It's the King James Bible and dispensationalism. And, that, and what's the basis for this? 2 Timothy 2.15, which we looked at. Amen. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing what? The word of truth. Amen. Now, if you want, if you don't care about the truth, you can go to other churches. You can cling on to other denominations. You can watch other YouTube channels, uh, other internet sources, listen to other pastors or so-called prophecy teachers. But see, when you look at these guys, they don't go by these two things. I don't care if they're revealing end-time conspiracies and a lot of interesting things. The thing is this, is that without these two authorities, you get no truth. You know how we can find all those end-time conspiracies? You know how we can find the deep doctrines? You know how we debunk all other religions, including the secular scholars and the higher, uh, higher education? It's through... The word of God, truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. What is truth? Thy word is truth. The book of John, chapter 17. Amen. So, the word of God is the final authority. But see, Satan wants to attack the word of God. That's the reason why, in order to attack the word of God, he comes up with higher and lower criticism. What is higher and lower criticism? Higher and lower criticism... They believe and teach that the Bible is not infallible. What they try to do is that the King James Bible has mistakes. And you got a thing called textual criticism. Mm -hmm. So 
So textual criticism, higher and lower criticism. These things, what they like to do is that they would like to critique the word of God and try to find words that do not match <clears throat> supposedly with the Hebrew and Greek. So the attack against the King James Bible is a pro-satanic attack. And this is attack. Now, why is that? Why is that a problem, Pastor? So let's go back to church history, shall we? <clears throat> what do we believe as Bible believers? We take every word of God seriously. Yeah. That's extremely important. Think about it. How did we even break off from the dark ages? And then we were able to advance technology. How were we able to have freedom of thought from the Catholic Church and all de Protestant denominations, how they break off? It's through the Word of God. Because some people stood up for the Bible and they said that the Bible is the final authority against the Word of the Church, which was a, the Catholic Church that time. They broke off the chains of Rome that time. Why is that? Because they took the Word of God seriously. What Satan wants you to do is to lose your final authority in the Word of God. In order to successfully do that, you have to critique the words. By critiquing the words, you can say, well, what that word really means is, and then you quote some Hebrew and Greek shenanigan <laughs> that you pulled up from your education, and you pull up some random concordance and lexicon. I mean, I could, I could swear that I bet you they're using a Strong's concordance every time they critique. Yeah. It's always a Strong's. So the thing is, is that they would pull up these words, find a word that fits with their teaching, That's right. and use that to critique the King James Bible. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is you being the final authority, yeah. mm -hmm. and you're picking and choosing Come which on. Hebrew and Greek grammar rule, mm -hmm. syntax, and Hebrew and Greek definition, when there are multiple definitions for a word, mm -hmm. to fit your doctrine. No difference from Catholic Pope. No difference from a Catholic Pope on who should be the interpreter of your Bible. That's right. <laughs> so people, you people don't have the freedom. You people don't have the freedom to think for yourself good. on what the Word of God says. Mm -hmm. No, what those scholars are saying, no, 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 listen to me. Yeah. Me. Yeah, that's for sure. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. That's typical. That's dark age teaching. That's dark age teaching. I thought that we were we're modernized, that we're independent thinkers, that we, we've grown up and all that kind of stuff. No, you're far from that. You don't go by the word of God. And the problem with mankind is that they subject themselves to scholars to critique the word of God. <coughs> Isn't the word of God the final authority? Amen. So we're returning to man as a final authority. If you think I'm wrong about this, then let me ask you this. Why are there over 200 modern versions? Yeah. You would think that we'd hit, the, we'd, we'd hit it by now. So you can see right here, Satan has successfully attacked churches. That's why you come up with many different doctrines. If you don't believe me, have you ever watched Christian pastors debate each other of doctrine? That's good. How many times have they used Hebrew and Greek? Oh, yeah. Their interpretation of syntax and grammatical interpretation uh, rather than the word of God itself. How many of them have you seen jumping to different modern versions, different Bibles to prove their teaching? See that? Satan has succeeded. Now the other thing is dispensationalism. How has Satan succeeded with that? How he attacked dispensationalism is through heretical doctrines. Covenant theology. You might say, what is covenant theology? That is the enemy branch of dispensationalism. Covenant theology, they teach these particular things. Covenant theology teaches a heresy about replacement theology. Okay, now what is replacement theology? That the church, the Christian church, is not different from Israel. That the Christian church replaced the nation of Israel, so God is done with the nation of Israel. That's a Roman Catholic teaching. Yeah. Roman Catholic, in their, they teach that the church has superseded, they continued on the working of Israel. So replacement theology is heresy. No, the Lord is Amen. using two different 
bodies here. He's using Israel, yeah. and he's using the church. Uh -huh. And that is, that's why you have Old and New Testament, see, yeah. with Israel and the church. Amen. People automatically assume because the Old Testament is done, you jump to the New Testament. So since the church is the New Testament, they replace Israel. But the problem is this, the Old Testament, there are verses in there that actually said it's an everlasting covenant. Amen. God will never break yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And by the way, even your New Testament said... That this Old Testament is done, but God makes a new one with Israel itself. So he's continuing on. Amen. Yeah. That's heresy. Yeah. Dispensationalism is against that. It teaches that there are divides two different groups of people. Israel and church. Another heresy that covenant theology teaches is that the church will go through the tribulation. Yeah, right? That is utter heresy. Yeah, kick it. And that's a Roman Catholic teaching as well. Mm -hmm. If you read their catechism, it says that the church will go through a final trial, going through the Antichrist, etc. This is all Roman Catholic teaching. Oh, by the way, the modern Bibles is Roman Catholic as well. I don't know if you knew that. Yes, sir. There are conspiracies behind it with the Jesuits, but let's uh, lay aside the conspiracies. Let's talk about substance right here. You take their official Nestle Allen text, the standard of all modern Bibles of their Greek criticism. If you look at that, you'll see Jesuits, you'll see Catholic people in that name of Lys, who are part of the, the people who gave you the Word of God. You trust those guys, huh? Go to all the major Bible committees, you will find a Catholic there. Hey, don't believe me. Do your research. Come on, preacher. See, this is all, uh, the, what, what is Satan trying to do? Go back to the Dark Ages. Back to Mother Church. That's why in the end times at the Tribulation, Mother Church will be alive during the Tribulation. She reigns supreme. Poor Babylon the Great. That's what the Bible calls her. Another heresy that covenant theology teaches. So this is a heresy that from covenant theology. I'm not sure how far it can read from the bottom. So you got just a little bit. Here. Yeah, All okay. right, thank you so much. In case I'll go over here. It teaches covenant of grace. Now covenant of grace is mostly a Calvinistic teaching. Right. So what I will do is I'll put covenant theology and I'll put in parentheses Calvinism. Yeah. <laughs> Calvinism is a doctrine from hell. Whether you That's like it or right. not. It is a doctrine from hell. It has many things similar with the Catholic Church, church teaching. Hmm, I wonder about that. Okay, but anyway, covenant of grace, what they teach is that, so obviously when you read your Bible, we know Noah was saved differently from us. That's pretty obvious. He had to build an ark. You don't build an ark for your salvation. That's a lot of work. And that's more than good works for salvation. That's a lot of works for your salvation. If I told you to go to church for your salvation, you would say that's a good work. If I told you to build a church building for your salvation, you would say that's a lot of work. If I told you to build an ark that's as long as a football field, you'd call me crazy. That's a lot of work. Amen. So whether you like it or not, Noah's salvation was definitely different from ours. You can't call that free grace, salvation by faith. Anyone who says that don't have common sense. <laughs> All right? You're not going to fool me by saying that to me. Build an ark. Oh, by the way, that's a demonstration of your faith for salvation. The free gift of God of grace. <laughs> no, it's not. How moronic, man. So in Noah, what he had to do was a combination of faith and works. He had to have a lot of faith on that one. That requires a lot of faith. And he had to do a lot of work to do that. So is faith and works. Now, here's the point. Covenant of grace, they teach... That salvation by grace has been the same from beginning to end. So when people accuse that doctrine of being heresy, no, that is a Calvinist heresy. Teaching salvation is the same from beginning to end is a Calvinist heresy. By the way, let me also say this. For people who like to give pretty words saying that, well, salvation has been different from beginning to end, but they all do it in different levels of faith, different levels of grace. The problem with that teaching is that's what covenant of grace teaches as well. It says it's the same salvation by grace done in different ways. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, so this is all Calvinistic heresy. This is also all Catholic heresy, all of this. This is why you see why these two things will clear up a lot of wrong doctrine. 
Some of you already just hearing all this, especially onliners, can already see the differences. You see what makes our kind of churches much more different than any other channel you watched and all the other churches you went to? It's these two primary doctrines, dispensationalism and the King James Bible. This is a pro-King James mindset. Why? There is no other verse in all the other Bibles and no other Bibles that has this kind of wording than study the word of truth with rightly dividing. That's a pro-King James mindset, dispensationalism mindset. That's demanded from the Word of God as 2 Timothy 2.15. Amen. How many people broke that commandment? That's why they're not of truth. Amen. To find truth, you have to have these two beliefs. You don't, if you don't believe these two beliefs, you don't have truth. That's why you've got to be dispensational and King James only. That's very important. If you go back to our history... All the way back to Antioch. The Bible says there the disciples were first called Christians. You know what's, you know what's mind-blowing about Antioch? The Bible says that's where the word of the Lord was preached. Oh, yeah. Antioch is located at Syria. Syria yeah. Do you know where the King James Bible came from? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it came from Syrian manuscripts. Yeah. Amen. Byzantine. Mm -hmm. Syrian Antioch manuscripts. Them. Not only that, you know what makes dispensationalists different from other people? And they know this. We take the Bible literally. Yeah, do. We don't make it metaphorical and give an idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Calvinist people, they're all about metaphorical. Yeah. They're not literal. Yeah. They're all metaphorical, figurative. That's a mindset of Alexandria, Egypt. Yeah, right. Alexandria, yeah, Egypt has been very infamous we're making things figurative, yeah. metaphorical. By the way, do you know where your modern Bibles come from? Alexandria, Egypt. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What did the Bible say about Egypt? Nothing good about Egypt. Nothing good. Vaticanus, Vaticanus, Sinaiticus, Egypt, and let's not forget the other one, Rome. Rome. Vaticanus. The two primary manuscripts, Vaticanus, Sinaiticus, are from <laughs> Egypt. Alexandria, area, and from Rome, the Roman Catholic Church. Now you see why we're living in a lie? That's where all the wrong doctrines, all the wrong Bibles come from. Right. What did the Bible say about Rome? Nothing good. What did the Bible say about Egypt? Nothing good. Worse, yeah. What did the Bible say at the end times what Rome will do? Mother whore, Babylon the Great. What did the Bible say about this one location during the end, time, end times where the Antichrist will reign? Sodom and Egypt. And Egypt yeah. See that? These two systems have been ever since the beginning of church history till now. Oh, wow. And a lot of Christian churches have fallen apostasy, deceived unconsciously by these two wicked systems. That's good. Alexandria and Egypt gave you the modern Bibles. They also gave you this metaphorical, figurative nonsense. Not only that, dispensationalism, you got to understand, is a mindset of taking the Bible literally every word. Do you know what Antioch was famously known for? Taking every word literally. Mm -hmm. They really meant that. They said literally. That's what they were known for in their history, Antioch. Yeah. That's our history. What's our history during the Protestant Reformation? The word of God as the truth to correct the Catholic Church, to resist the Catholic yeah. Church. But now you got these so-called Protestants who join with the Catholic Church to give you your right Bible, who uh, equates themselves teaching these similar doctrines that the Catholic Church teaches. What about the Great Awakening revivals? Do we have a bunch of modern Bibles that time? No, it was all born from the King James Bible. Yes, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands to millions got saved Repented, changed because of the King James Bible. That's what they were preaching out of. During that time, the Great Awakening Revivals, that's where we got dispensationalism as well. People studied the Bible more, took every word literally. Larkin, Schofield, these men all came out. Then you got uh, people like Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. And then he combined these two issues together. And when he combined these two issues together, thus were born Bible believers today. 
So now you got Dr. William Grady. You also got Dr. Sam Gibb. You got Dr. David Peacock. You got a lot of these other Bible-believing preachers, Pastor Kyle Stevens. You got uh, Dr. Vince Massa. You had uh, Pastor James Lentz. You had uh, all these different Bible-believing pastors sprouting around. Jack Chick, when he made those famous comic tracks, world's most published author. That's what the Smithsonian Institute called him. Born from King James Bible issue. He was pro-King James. So you understand this. This is where Bible believers come from. It's from dispensationalism and the King James Bible issue. All based off of this one verse that they wrote. All based off of this one. So you'll notice, biblically, the churches are apostasy. They violated this. Historically, Christian churches had violated it. Historically, from Antioch, Egypt, Protestant Reformation, Great Awakening Revivals, till today. And not only that, they also ignored the enemy. When, if you do believe in conspiracies, you ignore these two systems. Mm -hmm. You'll see these two systems in all the conspiracies out there. These two systems. You'll see Egyptian symbols everywhere. Mm -hmm. With whatever it be, the Jewish elites or the Freemasons. Oh, yeah. Or all these uh, bloodlines of the Illuminati, etc. Oh, you'll see Egyptian and you'll see Roman. You'll see Catholic everywhere. There's always a Catholic or a Jesuit with any kind of elite or conspiracy, yeah. which is very interesting. Go to news media, you'll find a Catholic. Go to the, the elites, you'll find a Catholic. The bankers, you'll find a Catholic. Hollywood, you'll find a Catholic. They're everywhere. The scientists at the labs, Come you'll on. find a Catholic. Yeah. Government, politicians, Democrats, Catholic. Republican, Catholic. Catholic. Everywhere. Bible version, I gave you the Bible, Catholic. Yeah, okay, cool. So, conspir conspiracy speaking, historically speaking, logically speaking, and biblically speaking, mm -hmm. I think you're outnumbered. Mm -hmm. Now, which group, which side are you joining? Yeah, amen. Now, st now stop watching me online and getting interested and come to San Jose Bible Baptist Church. Go to a Bible-believing church near you. That's right. It's about yeah. time. Stop watching all these uh, heretical channels and going to heretical churches. Get involved in a Bible-believing church. Amen.